Hi, Christy here. Welcome to our discussion about Scopus theory of translation. First thing that you need to know that the word Scopus is a Greek term which means purpose. It is a technical term encompassing the purpose of translation and the action of translating. This theory was first developed by this guy on 1978 and his name is Hans Vermeer. In Scopus theory, translation is considered as a communicative activity wherein the purpose of the target text is the top priority to determine how to translate the text. Scopus theory is among the functional theories of translation that basically used communicative approach to the analysis of translation. It started in Germany in 1970 and 80s giving a shift from the linguistic typologies or categorization type of translation into a more culturally considerate one. What is considered to be the major work in this theory was that of Ries and Vermeer, written in 1984, entitled Towards a General Theory of Translational Action. Now you might ask why is the purpose being given importance in this theory? According to this theory, a text is written for a specific purpose, and it is this purpose that the translator of a text should work into to achieve instead of just aiming for an equivalent translation of the source text. The main rule here is for the translator to be able to translate the text based on the reason why the text is translated, meaning the main consideration is on what the target user wants the translation for. As what Vermeer said, translate, interpret, speak, or write in a way that enables your text or translation to function in the situation in which it is used and with the people who want to use it, and precisely in the way they want it to function. The purpose then determines the methods and strategies to be used when translating the text. What is being sought is for the translatum or translated text to have a global function in each culture, meaning it should be functionally adequate. While translating, the translatum should have similar impact just like the source text. Scopus theory follows six basic rules. Number one, a translated text is determined by its scopus. Number two, a translated text is a message in a target culture concerning a message in a source culture. Number three, a translated text is not clearly reversible. Four, a translated text must be internally coherent. Five, a translated text must be internally coherent with the source text. And last, the rules above stand in hierarchical order with the Scopus rule predominating. Let us now discuss what these rules mean. Rule 1 is the superior of all rule such that the translated text is regulated by its purpose. Rule 2 means both the source text and translated text have particular function in their specific linguistic and cultural context such that their function may not be necessarily the same whereas 4 and 5 give us the idea on how to evaluate the success of a translation by judging its functional adequacy, which is, consists of coherence rule and fidelity rule. As explained by Ries and Vermeer, coherence rule means the translated text must make sense to its receivers considering their circumstances, knowledge, and needs, whereas fidelity rule means there should be consistency between the translated text and source text. In general, it is the job of the translator to ensure that the translated text achieve its purpose first, then situate that it is coherent with that of the source text. But just like any other theories, Scopus theory has been questioned and criticized. But the most important advantage this theory has is that it permits the possibility that the same text may be translated in different ways depending on the purpose of translation.